See, God bought you. He paid a price for you. He bought you. He owned you. See, people want to cry about stories of slavery in the Bible. Uh, God didn't condone it. He said, if a man sells another man, he shall be put to death. That's how God feels about slavery. But all those stories of slavery teach you the slave and master relationship. If you're not for the master, then you're against the master. It's that simple. When you were purchased as a slave, you were owned entirely by the slave owner. He not only purchased your physical body, but debts that debts that you owed were now paid by him. Now that debt is owed to him. He paid for your debts. That slave master bought you and all and any ties to you are severed. You belong to him, so, period, sovereign. You are under his master. You are under his lordship. He owns you. Literally, you are his slave. Now, people use the word slave as negative connotation. There was also, when debt was owed, servants. Servants and lords. Lords of the house. And what was, if you had a... People, remember, there was large families back then. People traveled in groups of 60. People traveled in group in the hundreds. There were traveling tribes, huge families that traveled together, sometimes in greater numbers than those, probably often in greater number than those. Okay, so let's just say, let's just say a king let's just say a king or a, a group leader each family had its own leader it was their kin we throw a G on the end and the leader is a king right and so um, let's suppose that you were not nomadic yet you had a castle let me give you this example a king in his castle well the king is not going to be pushing a broom so he needs to hire someone to clean the castle He's not going to be dredging the bodies out of the moat. He's going to hire somebody. He's going to have a servant do that. See, now, now think of kingdoms as being far from the other. So you just didn't drive to work in the morning and drive home at night. You took a week's journey, several weeks' journey, maybe months' journey to get there so that you could be provided for in exchange for your services. That's why you are a servant, because you were providing services. But you weren't afforded, you weren't afforded um, the opportunity you are now to drive somewhere in an, you know, an hour, half hour, hour, two hours, and back, and make a commute daily to go to a job. When you were part of the service, you lived at the host's dwelling. And people confuse this with slavery. No, this was you going to provide a service for someone who was going to provide you. Now, he's a king, so he has an army. So he's going to provide you protection. He's going to provide you with food. And because he's the king, you can believe that it's going to be pretty good food. Even if, even if say, you just get the servant's portion which is less than the sun's, it's still better than you might be able to get on your own a week away out in the wilderness or a month away out in the wilderness. He's providing you with a way of living in exchange for your services. So that is the relationship between Lord and servant versus slave and master. But you see how the two both show the same thing. The servant 
and the slave are indebted to the master and the Lord, you see, because they bo it's, it's to both of their benefits to please the master, right? Because the repercussions, repercussions are not something you want. In the event of slavery, there was beatings and death. In servitude, there's beatings and death. There's uh, dismissal from services. There's that separation. You go from being in the house of and under the protection of the king, the ruler, the lord. Under the master, and so you're out from under his wing. You're out from under his wing of protection. And so who do you serve then? Yourself. And out in the wild, out in the wild earnest, in this wilderness we live in that's run by the enemy, what do you gain by serving yourself? Nothing. Get under the wing of the Father. Get under the protection of the King of Kings. Get into the kingdom of heaven. Get in a line with the Father. Get in a line with the Word. Get the darkness out of your soul and get the Word into it. When it's there, meditate on it all day. And see, don't get hung up on that, oh my God, how am I going to meditate on it all day? You get it in there all day. Because how it works, the mind, if you sit there, anyone meditate? Well, I tried it years ago. I couldn't do it because my mind kept wandering. Thoughts kept popping up. Thoughts kept creeping up. And so one of the complaints in meditation, which as a Christian I advise you not to do, um, in meditation was that these thoughts keep creeping up. Well, it turns out the soul, people think it's the mind, but see, the soul, the soul has, as a unit, encompasses mind, emotions, processing. See, what it is, is the soul, the soul, for those of you who knew computer terminology, the soul is the operating system for the vehicle. The vehicle is the body, right? God took dust. He took the earth and blew spirit into it. So now you're a hybrid. You're an earth spirit man. Ha-Adam. Earth spirit man. Adam. And so you're a hybrid. And, uh, and as a hybrid, you have the spirit in you. The spirit of God in you. But guess what? He loves you. He loves you so much. He lets you choose. Because if he forces you to love him, then it's not real love. So, he gives you the choice. And you only have two choices. So, it's the world. And this is, this is everything, uh, everything that you see. Hold on, let me back up here. I'm starting to get sidetracked for a second um, so your soul let me back up to the soul the soul is, is part of the operating system one of the things it does is it takes in and stores information now and holds it there right takes it in stores it information and so going back to the meditation analogy when you sit there and these thoughts keep coming thoughts keep coming thoughts keep coming you say oh my god where are they you know and they say uh, oh let them pass let them pass but where are they coming from? If you're there and you're, you're trying to quiet your mind, in the meditation example, if you're trying to quiet your mind and these thoughts keep coming, where are they coming from? Well, it turns out they're coming from your experiences. Have you ever gone, this is the computer terminology again, go on to Google and you start to type in a search query and before you can finish typing it, it auto-completes a sentence and it drops down a list of possible choices. And so those are based on experiences. Those are based on the number of searches that are coming into Google. And so when these thoughts creep up, when these thoughts pop up out of you, it is 
your body's version of Google Anal um, Google um, I almost said analytics Google uh, uh, geez what would you call it auto suggest and so your mind what you think is what you're saying is your mind which is just a, a part of the soul part of the operating system um, where this information is stored um, all it does is it all it does is the mind regurgitates your experiences and how do the experiences get in there well everything you see this includes movies art everything you hear this includes music and sounds this and everything you feel this includes feelings physical and emotions and this includes emotions so and this includes senses right and these are these are these are how you experience physical life this is how you experience this world is through those ways and so when your mind sits idle the body has the body has wants and needs because see the body is is uh, response motivated and it wants to move towards what makes it feel best and so it wants to move towards things like fornication um, for that physical fulfillment it wants to move towards things like lying sometimes people lie because the truth is too uncomfortable for them they want to move towards things like stealing you know they just don't want to work to have that and they they want to take someone else's they you know they want to have envy and strife and all of these things which are which are traps of the mind right you're letting the body the body is the child in the in the hybrid scenario the earth wants what uh, the earth needs but the spirit needs none of it so if you allow the spirit to be in charge you be able to control the body and how do you let the spirit be in charge is by being under the master's wing being under the protection see one of the things that the that the father provides for you now this we're going to jump from physical earthly kingdom to heaven kingdom on earth by the way through you but to use the spirit that's in us we need to be under the father's wing we need to be in line with the father's ways we need to hear and regurgitate the father's word you see all of those random thoughts that come out of us based on our experience we need to change our experience for one we need to empty our soul we need to turn our direction towards the father only see i said there was two choices the world or jesus jesus is the way to the father and if you're if you're being dominated by something you are a slave to something you have a master I promise you if you if you smoke cigarettes you are a slave to those cigarettes if you do drugs you're a slave to those drugs if you're an alcoholic you're a slave to that if you're a sex addict you're a slave to that physical sensation you are you are engaged in the slave master relationship in your life right now you have been since birth and you will be until death as long as you let the body's operating system run the computer get in line with the father get under the father's wing empty out the soul of all darkness because the world is darkness and if you don't believe me pray to the father and ask him to show it to you your eyes will be open pray that the father opens your eyes and they'll be open if you ask and it don't happen right this second have patience or pray again to establish this relationship means daily meeting the father for someone who never knew him is like a blind date hey I'm uh, Lee nice to meet you hey I'm the father yeah I know you so and I've loved you you know you, you may be creepy on a first date but the father's known you forever he created you 
He loves you. He loved you the day He created you. He loves you right now. He sent His Son. He sent His Son to be a sacrifice. So that you would know how much He loves you. So if you want to walk in the Spirit, live for the Father. Be a slave to His mastery. Be a slave to Him through Jesus. Be a slave. Do His will. Do His will. It's been hidden right there in the prayer. That kingdom come. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The Spirit's in you. The Spirit's in you. You don't go to the heaven. Heaven is in you. The Father is in the kingdom. The kingdom is in you. The Father is light. The Father is spirit. The Spirit is in you. How? The narrow path. By living how Jesus lived. By doing what Jesus did. Well, how do we know what Jesus did? Jesus was the Word. The Bible is the Word. Read the Bible. You want to know how to, you know, want to know how to make this blind date progress? You take the next step. It says, the Father leans in when you lean in. You want him to step towards you? Take a step towards him. He went first. He sent his son. He took his step. And he wiped away all your sins. If you just ask him for it. He just wants you to turn to him. He wants you to get under his wing. He wants you to get under his protection. He wants you to get into his alignment so you can live the life that he's planned for you. Because it's exceeding anything that your fleshly processing system can come up with. Your spiritual daddy knows something much more wonderful for you. He has plans for something much more wonderful for you. Don't be deceived by the world. See, the body system is of the child of the hybridization of the earth versus the spirit the earth is the child it makes decisions and thoughts that appease itself the spirit sees the bigger picture the spirit is the the spirit is the operating system that you want to be running from right you were born with this flesh body, but you got an upgrade. Now you got a spirit. Right? Let it run the show. Well, how do we know how to let the spirit run it? Read it. It's in the book. Read God's word. You find out this this blind date. You get you get to learn about him. You get to see what he likes. You get to see what he doesn't like. It's a it's a manual, right? What's he like? What's he what's he not like? What does he expect of you? What does he want to give you? I told you get under the king's protection so you can receive his blessings, so you can receive his rewards, his gifts. Well, what gifts does he have for you? Read the book, right? Read the book. You want to learn about, listen, husbands, if, this, if you had one of these that told about your wife, you would read it just so you would make your life easier. Women, same thing. If you had a how-to book about your husband, You'd want to read it. You'd have things figured out. It's the same way with your Papa in heaven. He sent you a book to introduce himself, to tell you about him, to let you know he loves you. Read it. Read it. In Jesus' name, bless you all. I love you.